Classifying life is an endless endeavor. Nature does not owe us explanation and clarification, and so, any attempts to neatly categorize and analyze the kingdom of life is inherently going to be quite difficult. We are left using the fields of phylogeny, the study and categorization of living organisms based on physical and genetic similarities. By assuming that similarities in those aspects denote relation, one can map out phylogenetic trees, diagrams that describe the evolutionary path any species took. It also allows us to separate life into neat little boxes to satisfy our craving for order. Over the years, the Hunter's Guild has classified many distinct clades of monsters, grouped based on physical and genetic evidence. Of the many beasts that prowl the land, few groups are as famous and feared as the Flying Wyverns. These ferocious creatures are widespread and successful, terrorizing every region so far mapped by the guild. Flying Wyverns are defined mostly by their body plan. They have four limbs and a tail, with the frontal limbs either possessing full wings or at least vestigial membranes. Their front limbs also generally extend sideways, while their back limbs point directly downwards under the body. Most flying wyverns are in effect bipedal, using only their back limbs to walk while their front limbs are reserved for flight. However, there are some quadrupedal flying wyverns, which use their wing arms for grounded movement as well. Curiously, despite the name, being able to fly is not a necessary feature to be classified as a flying wyvern. There are some that can only barely fly, and some that are entirely flightless. But all flying wyverns were, at some point or another in their evolutionary history, able to fly, and the remnants of that ability are what makes them flying wyverns. These features are somewhat arbitrary and hard to observe when running from one of these creatures. Thus, the Hunter's Guild periodically releases phylogenies that illustrate the relationships between species. For that to be useful, one must know how to read a phylogenetic tree. Every phylogeny starts with a root, representing the ancestral lineage of the distant past. This root splits into branches, which eventually end in specific species. Every split point represents the last common ancestor the connected species had. This means that the fewer split points exist between two species, the closer their phylogenetic relationship is. Groups of species on one branch can also be classified into various tiered categories. Order, suborder, infraorder, superfamily, family, species, and finally subspecies. There are actually more possible categories to be added into a phylogeny, but the guild tends to stick to only these. On the phylogenetic tree released by the guild, flying wyverns are part of the order Sauritia, like almost all wyverns. The title Flying Wyverns is here not included as its own phylogenetic rank because it is not really a biological class. Rather, it is a functional name used to warn hunters of what they can roughly expect to encounter when hunting any given beast. Two branches of the phylogeny are thus defined as the Flying Wyvern class. More specifically, Flying Wyverns can be grouped into two suborders of Sauritia, Nonalisopoda and Dracopoda. Nonalisopoda is the more bizarre suborder out of the two. Meaning no wing feet, this suborder includes the few flying wyverns that have entirely lost not just the ability to fly, but all but the most vestigial remnants of wings. Looking at these creatures, the term flying wyvern seems downright foolish. The species in this group tend to be fairly massive. Without having to worry about being too heavy to fly, Narlisopode evolved into giant behemoths of power and strength. Additionally, due to their huge size and appropriately massive lungs, these wyverns are veritable sound cannons, able to weaponize their roars into actually viable weapons. Only two families are thus classified in this suborder, Akan and Ukan, with each only having a single representative species. 
The Akantor is a lava-dwelling flying wyvern whose massive spikes and tusks both protect it from flying assaults and slice open armored prey with ease. The Ukanlos, meanwhile, lives in arctic regions, digging through the frost and causing avalanches in the process. Both of these species have historically been highly revered and feared due to their size and strength, and they are sometimes called the Black and White God, respectively. They have also evolved to heavily favor digging, which has been suggested to be a general trait of the nonalisopods. All other flying wyverns fall into the suborder Dracopoda, or wyvern feet. They are defined by the typical flying wyvern body plan, as well as all of them having at the very least vestigial wings. Compared to Nonalisopoda, Dracopoda is a much more diverse clade, including 6 infraorders and 12 superfamilies. The history of this clade stands and falls with its most famous ancestor, the Wyvern Rex. This ancestral flying wyvern now only exists in fossils, but its importance lives on. Namely, it is believed that all flying wyvern of the Dracopoda suborder descended from the wyvern rex, making it a crucial point in evolutionary history. The split between the Nonalisopodae and the Dracopodae seems to not have been particularly clean. While the Nonalisopods had no wings and were developing to accommodate that, the Dracopods gave birth to the wyvern rex, which had wings but was beginning to adapt to a quadruped lifestyle similar to that of the nonalisopods. Its front limbs were strong and angled towards the ground, which probably made the wyvern rex a clumsy flyer. And while it wasn't as massive or heavy as the nonalisopods, it was already showing signs of bulging muscle growth and increasing body weight. Off of wyvern rex, Every other flying wyvern evolved based on how they iterated off of this odd, semi-flightless creature. Two infraorders descended very closely from the wyvern rex, inheriting its basic body plan and shape. The true foot wyvern and the false foot wyvern. True foot wyvern are, as the name suggests, the most direct descendants of the wyvern rex, not just generally looking like it, but also completely inheriting its near flightlessness. There is only a single family in this infraorder, the Tigrex, who is only extremely rarely seen flying short distances, but whose ferocious strength makes it a powerful grounded opponent. It is the key to much of the information the guild has so far discovered on the Wyvern Rex, as they are believed to be so extremely similar. This is the reason why Tigrex is sometimes described as a primitive or ancient species, because of how much it inherited from its ancestor. The false foot wyvern, meanwhile, may look extremely similar to the wyvern rex, but they largely evolved to be less heavy set and more nimble. More crucially, they have somewhat reclaimed the ability to fly and have also modified the wing structure significantly. This infraorder can be further defined with the superfamily front wing wyvern also called pre-winged foot wyvern in some older guild textbooks. This superfamily contains two known families of species. One is the Nargacuga, an ambush predator that prowls the shadows. It is extremely fast, and while it still prefers to walk, it can also take flight when need be. Interestingly, the exact amount of flying that this species does differs between regional populations, with New World Nargacuga basically never flying, for example. Also interesting to note is that the wings of the Nargacuga are modified to make the phalange into wing blades that it can use for actual attacks. The other family on this branch are the Berioth species, which have the most sophisticated flying abilities out of all foot wyverns. Whether it be the common species which patrols the arctic regions, or the desert dwelling subspecies, Berioth are apex predators whose strong muscles, spiky hide, and excellent flying ability earns them many victories. They, just like the Nargacuga, have also modified their wings, making them much spikier which allows for head-on collisions as well as better grip on the ice for the arctic species. While the foot wyvern clade took the wyvern rex's body plan and iterated on it, other flying wyverns opted to massively change it and did not inherit the Wyvern Rex's quadruped lifestyle, 
and instead developed more traditional wings on their forelimbs. One such example would be the infraorder shell wyvern. These flying wyverns grow a thick but light armor shelling on their skin, which gives them decent resistance to collisions and blunt force, while remaining light enough to fly effectively. This combination gave rise to the superfamily called True Flying Wyvern. As the name implies, these are veritable rulers of the sky. Their tough shell allows for brutal attacks, and yet it does not slow them down one bit. The most famous family of species in this group are the Raths. Their flying ability is almost unparalleled, as their light and muscular bodies allow for truly death-defying maneuvers. Coupled with a flaming breath, poison glands, and a highly cooperative pair strategy, it is no wonder that the Raths are so successful, living in many various regions and comprising three separate species of different rarity and strength. Tissue analysis has also suggested that shell wyvern are actually more closely related to foot wyvern than the other clades are. However, the exact relation here is not yet determined. While the shell wyverns evolved shells that balanced light weight against being sturdy, another infraorder went all in on protective armor, the carapace wyverns. These flying wyverns are defined by being entirely covered in thick, heavy carapace armor that can deflect even the fiercest attacker. As a result, however, these creatures tend to be among the heaviest wyvern, making them fairly inept at long distance flight. Some compensate for this through digging. Carapace wyverns can be further separated into three superfamilies Armor Wyvern, Horn Wyvern, and Thorn Wyvern. Armor Wyvern are all about defense. Their carapace is not only extremely thick and strong, but is also further enhanced by the wyvern's diet. Armor wyverns eat minerals and ores in addition to their insectivore lifestyle, which are repurposed into their suit of armor, where they thicken the beast's hide further and grow into rocky outcrops. The main representative species here is the Gravios, a massive armor wyvern that spends its youth as a Becerios, hiding in plain sight by pretending to be a pile of boulders. It is basically flightless, it can hover a little bit, but it is ultimately very rarely seen even trying. Horn wyverns, meanwhile, sacrificed a bit of their defense by comparison, as their thick hides do not get complemented by rocky growths and mineral supplements. Instead, horn wyverns evolved massive horns that serve as a threat display and a deadly weapon. All known species of horn wyverns also grow an ossified frill at the back of their heads, which aids in defending the neck, similar to ceratopsian dinosaurs. Interestingly, despite their imposing appearance, horn wyverns are generally herbivorous. In this superfamily lies the Bloss family, which includes the Diablos and the Monoblos species, as well as any subspecies branching off of them. Among the carapace wyverns, the thorn wyvern superfamily stands out, as it exhibits a unique iteration of the defining carapace armor. Instead of producing an impenetrable rocky armor or massive horns, thorn wyverns developed a shroud of hard carapace plates littered with short, sharp thorns. This small change is surprisingly effective. The triangular shape of these thorn plates makes them even more resistant to impact due to the automatic geometric pressure distribution of triangle shapes, and the thorns can function as both threat display and additional offense when trying to body check opponents. Because these carapace plates are more sturdy than just a flat, straight carapace armor, the hide of a thorn wyvern doesn't need to be quite as thick as for example that of an armor wyvern, which means that thorn wyvern can actually be quite a lot lighter. This also leads to many of them actually being quite capable of flight, having ultimately never evolved the ability to dig that the other two superfamilies so prominently have. The most prominent member of this superfamily is the Espinas, whose green carapace and red thorns are well known across the lands. The Espinas specifically evolves its hide further, as the thorns are filled with toxin glands that make the beast even more dangerous. 
This has a side effect, however. These glands need blood circulation, meaning that the Aspinas's hide is full of blood vessels. When enraged, its vessels expand and become both visible and highly susceptible to external damage. Thus, this unique armor comes with unique risks. Some Espinos species, like the Flaming Espinos, further iterate on this by storing both poison and sulfuric acid in their thorns. But if one wants to experience unique flying wyverns, there is no better group to look at than the Strange Wyverns. The name of this infraorder communicates it already. The flying wyverns in this group are downright bizarre. Strange wyverns are cave-dwelling wyverns that generally do not have scales. Instead, they are covered in a smooth, sometimes moist hide that makes them resemble leeches. This hide usually helps in some kind of perceptive way, aiding in their senses. They are often nocturnal and either partially or entirely blind. There are two superfamilies here. The Venom Wyvern includes the Nox family of species, most prominently the Giginox. As the name of the superfamily suggests, Giginox are highly toxic, stunning prey with venom before dragging it into their cave. The Giginox doesn't rely on traditional eyesight, but instead uses heat-detecting organs in its head to hone in on living targets. The second superfamily of the Strange Wyverns is the Pale Wyverns, which only includes the Kezu. While very similar to the Giginox, Kezu do not use heat to sense prey, instead relying on an extremely accurate sense of smell. And while the various Giginox species use either poison or thunder as their main weapon, all known Kezu exclusively attack with the thunder element. The last named infraorder within Dracopoda is the group Electric Wing Wyvern. Members of this infraorder are defined by a unique wing structure called a piezoelectroallium. By contracting and expanding the wing membranes rapidly, these wyverns can generate electric charges through piezoelectricity, a phenomenon where electricity is generated through physical stress and motion. This means that electric wing wyverns can produce deadly amounts of thunder simply by moving, making them both fast and dangerous. So far, only a single family with a single species have been classified in this infraorder, the Zekusu family's Astalos, whose entire body produces electricity through motion. Unlike most flying wyverns, it has an extremely light, chitin-like shell wrapped around a body filled with additional joints of muscles, which maximize the amount of movement the wyvern can do. For example, its head crest can rapidly contract just like its wings, serving no purpose besides storing up piezoelectricity. Outside of these six named infraorders, the flying wyvern clade also includes four uncategorized superfamilies. The guild has, as of yet, not put them into their own infraorder. The superfamily Inflating Neck Wyvern is fairly self-descriptive. Members of this group tend to have skin sacs around their necks, which can be inflated with air, letting these wyverns levitate like a hot air balloon. The most prominent member of the superfamily is the Paolumu, which uses this levitation ability in conjunction with its wings to perform some truly mesmerizing airborne maneuvers. These skin sacs can be torn, however, which is a serious weak spot for these wyvern. The superfamily expanding wing wyvern, meanwhile, needs a little more explanation. Members of this group have highly flexible wings, which are made up of multiple flaps. These flaps can expand and contract at will, and in various different orientations. This adaptation serves to latch onto air currents, allowing members of this group to fly using extremely little energy as they ride existing air currents. This makes them excellent flyers that can perform extreme maneuvers with very little energy. The main representative of the expanding wing wyverns is the Legiana, a slender, migratory flying wyvern that combines this ability with a cool liquid produced in its torso, which is frozen by the air currents and can then be used as an icy mist attack. 
The Legiana also highlights this adaptation's weakness, however. It limits the habitat of these wyverns to areas that have the right air currents. Legiana, for example, only live either in the Coral Highlands or the Hoarfrost Reach, as only those two areas, as well as the ocean between them, have the right air currents. Lastly, there are two superfamilies that have become somewhat controversial among the scholars of the guild. These would be the Exploding Scale Wyverns and the Blade Scale Wyverns. Exploding Scale Wyverns are defined by having one or two areas on their bodies which produce Blast Scales, a type of scale that secretes an explosive coagulant liquid. This liquid hardens when in contact with air and hangs off the wyvern as a tear-shaped chunk. Once detached either by accident or intent, these chunks begin reacting rapidly to the air around them, heating up until they explode. The most famous example of an exploding scale wyvern is the enormous basil geese, which has adapted to take full advantage of its blast scales. Its heavy body can withstand its own explosions effortlessly, and its blast scales sit in the wyvern's beard and tail, making it easy to detach the explosive chunks at will by swinging either end of the body. Blade scale wyverns are also defined by modified scales. They are covered in blade scales, which are oddly shaped scales with razor sharp edges, perfect for cutting and slicing on impact. Their most prominent representative is the Seregios, which takes this concept and further enhances it through unique muscular adaptations. In the Seregios, the blade scales are connected to wave like muscle bands that can vibrate them at will. This allows for a loud and menacing threat display, but it also grants the Seregios the ability to fling its blade scales at its targets by detaching them at the right time. The reason that these two superfamilies have been somewhat controversial within the guild is that various scholars have proposed that they might be related. This is based on their physical similarities and their reliance on modified scales, leading to a push to categorize them under a new infra-order. The guild has however not budged on this, insisting that their similarities can easily be explained by convergent evolution, a process where two largely unrelated species develop similar features in response to similar conditions. These roughly 30 species, grouped into two suborders, six infraorders, and 12 superfamilies, comprise the classification known as flying wyverns. They likely only comprise a fraction of the extant species, however, as the wonders of our world are essentially boundless. In fact, there are reports of sightings of creatures that are probably flying wyverns, but were never properly hunted and classified for the guild to actually analyze. Nonetheless, phylogenies such as these help us make at least a little sense of the marvelous lands that we call home. As always, thank you so much for watching. Check out the description and the pinned comment for sources and clarifications regarding the canonicity of all the stuff I just talked about. Uh, a very special thank you, as always, to our patrons, which include Fictionape, Sini, Claire Meboon, Drexian, Geo, Jameson Tate, Makote O2, Mr. Pyramid, Mr. Meander, Pede Fuego, Pero Scoco, Person 212, Project Iceman, Vulgar Beast, Zetsubo, Oak Wood Tree, Iron Camel, and Courage. Thank you again, and I'll see you all next time. And in the meantime, if you want to like and subscribe, that would be lovely, but no pressure. I'll see you guys around. Bye bye.